they give you something. They'll say current is two plus eight T. Current is the change of charge over time. So once you know that the charge per unit time is the same thing as current, then you're in business. That's the hard part because then you can say, well, therefore DQ is DT. And then you can take the integral of both sides. With the motion problems, it's the same thing. You, they're either going to give you acceleration or velocity. So let's look at questions three and four, for example. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And you should know that from your, well, from before, from derivatives, right? So then all you have to say is, okay, well, if acceleration is the same as this, it's just understanding it as a differential. So if acceleration is 10T, then you can say, all right, then dV is 10T dt. And then you can say V is therefore the integral of 10t dt. Okay, in both of these situations, you have what's called an indefinite integral, right? We don't have boundaries. We have other information that we're going to use, right? Like in question one, we know uh, there's a seven second thing going on. Like that's the question is, what is the total charge uh, in seven seconds? We have a time, but we're going to have to solve for C somehow, right? So again, I think I mentioned at the very beginning, applications of indefinite integrals means that you're going to have to solve for C at some point. So don't forget that part. Well, let's take the integral first. The charge is, right, using the coefficient rule, I can just pop that two out. plus C. In order to solve for C, as we've tried before in the past, you need to have additional information. Here, they just say, the question is, what total charge passes in seven seconds? So I want to put in seven where T is. That's what I want to do. But before that, I need to figure out what C is. In question two, they give you more information. They say if 0.6 coulombs at time is exists at time zero, then you can go ahead and put in 0.6 for the charge, time for zero, and solve for C. But here we don't have any additional information. So we're going to do what makes sense at this point is assume there is no charge at time zero which is the logical assumption here, right? In question two, it's a little bizarre that they, they're telling you that 0 0.6 charge, 0 0.6 coulombs has passed at time zero. So in that case, you'd have to put in 0 0.6 where Q is, and then time was, would be zero. But in this case, they don't give you any additional information. So I'm just gonna say that, you know, I'm gonna write that down and say, well, at time zero, it makes sense that charge is zero. And in that case, C becomes zero. Right, if everything here is zero, zero equals zero plus zero plus C, C is zero. But show that work. Therefore, your equation is, and now you can solve for T equals seven. Two ten. Put your units in there. See if you can get question two. That one's a little bit more complicated, but just because the integral is more complicated, you'll have to use a u substitution there. So if, if you know that acceleration is change of velocity over change of time, 
that's the hard part, right? Because you just got to set up your differential and then you're good. So let's try that one. Let's finish off question three, right? So you take your integral. Right, if velocity is the change in position over time, this I find is the hard part, right? Then you say, okay, therefore ds is, and then you take your integral. You know, velocity is 5t squared plus c. And then you have to go, right? So that's the first step of setting it up. I would go, in all of these problems, the first one, is figuring out what dif differential you need. If we know acceler if, if they give you acceleration, then you're gonna need dv dt. The second one is setting up your integral. Once you have your differential, you set up your integral, you solve, you do it, and then you have c. And then the fourth step is you have to use some additional information, right? So uh, not so I know that if acceleration is this, its initial velocity is, is 25. I know that uh, V equals 25 uh, at T equals zero. C is 25. So maybe step five is basically the end, right? I know my equation therefore is this. That's all we have to do. Find, right? The question just says find the object's velocity as a function of time. There we go. Done.